Hi guys, Peter Finch here. Welcome down to Tech Tuesday, your weekly look at everything to do with technology in golf. And boy oh boy, have we now fully delved into silly season. Uh, the PGA Orlando trade show is going to be kicking off properly today, which is Tuesday. I'm filming this on a Monday and most of the stories are going to be coming out at the end of the week, which will be Sunday. Lots of days this week, there's going to be stuff coming out. But what we've managed to see quite a lot of in the last few days is pre-announcements, a few announcements which have happened just this morning about new products which are coming out and hitting the market, and there's loads and loads to get through. So this is a story which I actually missed last week, but I think it's probably one of the coolest ones that we're going to talk about today. So this is a new pusser that TaylorMade are bringing out in association with Blast. And it is called possibly one of the worst names for a putter I've ever heard in my life, the Spider Interactive powered by Blast. I mean, how about the Blast Spider or the Spider Blast? The Blasting Spider. Spider Blasting Away Blaster. So this putter is only going to be available in the middle of March. So it's still quite a long wait if you want to get your hands on them. But just have a look at these images and look how cool that it looks. First of all, the Spider Putter has been commercially a great success for TaylorMade. So if they're going to bring out this type of putter with this type of technology, it makes sense to do it with that model. And what they've done here is they've added in blast sensors to the putter so it gives you stats and it gives you data on your strokes. So these are just some of the stats that the blast sensor and this putter is going to give you. So it's backstroke time, forward stroke time, tempo, total stroke time, backstroke length, impact stroke speed, backstroke rotation, forward stroke rotation, rotation change, loft change, and lie change. So just imagine that ability to be able to have a putting stroke to practice and get real-time feedback from your putter. This is the future. It is here. Robots are taking over. Before long, you're not even going to have to use your own putting stroke. You just get a robot to do it for you. I mean, it might take the fun out of the game, but you see where I'm going with this. It is now the time where companies are trying to figure out ways to make their products more appealing. And sticking this type of technology in a putter with the associated app, which I imagine, which I imagine would mean you'd have to have your phone close by, but having the ability to just be able to see what's happening in your stroke so quickly, as long as it is accurate, and obviously we've not had a go with this yet, so we don't know, but it looks fantastic and I'm so excited to see where technology is going to be going in this respect. Cobra have already done it with the Cobra Connect which is in their F8 fairway woods but also the driver which gives you driving stats and now we have a specific putting stat version and I'm very very interested and excited to get my hands on that. And is that something that you guys will be interested in? Something which gives you real-time ball club data like this does you know what, I don't even care if you're not excited. I am. I'm excited, okay? And in other short game news, uh, Vokey are bringing out the new wedges. So the title is Vokey SM7s, and they look great. So if you are a fan of golf, you'll know that Akushna have these little brands within brands. So you've got Titleist, but you've got Scotty Cameron, you've got Vokey Wedges, you know, these little in-house stores, if you want to look at it like that, that have very good and very strong brand recognition and people love to buy them. Vokey Wedges are one of those brands that when they come out, people like to dabble and people like to get hold of them. And looking at how these are shaped and looking at what they're saying, again, I'm really looking forward to giving these a go. And the story that Titleist are going to be pushing behind these wedges is the amount of different grinds that you can now get on the wedges themselves. So how the sole is shaped to enable you to play lots of different shots. And I'm going to take you through the different grind options that are available on these wedges because there are a lot. So you've got the F grind. Full sole designed primarily for full swings and square face shot. So these are only available from 46 to 52. As you'd imagine, these are most of the full shots that you're going to be hitting. Uh, the S grind, uh, which is based on feedback from Seed Stricker, hence the S, uh, is such more versatile than the F grind. The M grind, this is Vokey's favourite, uh, is designed for players that like to rotate the club face open and shut to manufacture shots around the green, so lie the club differently. The new D grind offers high measured bounce with the crescent shape of the M grind for shot making versatility. That's a 
quite a mouthful. The K grind, that's the highest bounce in the uh, lineup, the most forgiving wedge as well, as far as that's concerned. And then the L grind is a narrow crescent shape, and that's for real versatility around the green if you really want to manufacture shots. Wedge grinds are something which not really many people look into that deeply, but how that sole is shaped and the way that the club interacts with the ground is very, very important. So getting yourself into the correctly fitted wedge is something which many golfers will actually benefit from. But in reality, I mean, please comment below if you've had one, not many people have had a wedge fitting. It is very simple, going into the shop, picking up a new wedge and having at it. However, getting yourself properly fitted for a grind, it can really benefit you vastly around the greens. And let me know what you think. Do you like Vokey wedges? Are you excited about this lineup as well? So a few weeks ago, we spoke a little bit about new distance measuring technologies, whether it be GPS or laser, and how companies in that market can actually improve upon the products that they are producing. Well, Bushnell are going to give it a good old go. So I took a picture up on the screen here, but you can actually see that it's got all the normal stuff that you'd expect from the Bushnell. So it looks like it's got slope on there as well. Uh, and then on the side of it, it's got, looks like front, middle and back to the green as far as the GPS is concerned. So just to give you a bit of a rundown of the features here. So it's got pin seeker with Jolt technology. It just basically picks up the pin. Uh, it's accurate to one yard, uh, five times magnification, ranges 400 yards to a flag, so hopefully you know, you're not going to be needing too much more of that. Uh, fast focus system, stable grip technology, you know, blah, 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 all the rest of it. Uh, but the GPS features exterior front, centre, back readouts, uh, up to four hazard distances per hole, Bluetooth for auto course updates, auto course recognition and auto hole advance. So this is one of the things where you're looking at a manufacturer actually thinking a little bit outside the box and how to start fusing these technologies because GPS certainly has its uses. So looking to hazards and actually trying to plot your way around the hole a little bit better. But the Bushnell or the laser range finders also have good advantage as well because they're so quick, you just zap targets and all the rest of it. So putting them all in one unit I think it's a pretty good idea. And as always with stuff like that, how do the others now respond? You know, how do the other companies now make something which is going to be a little bit better than that? Because certainly this is the first time I've seen this technology. And guys, what do you actually use most of? Do you use lasers more? Do you use rangefinders, GPS, if that's something that you're interested in? Or do you not bother using them at all and just go by markers on the course or just by feel? Right guys, thank you so, so much for watching and there's going to be so much more to talk about within the next week as far as tech is evolved. Like I said, the trade show is always a great way for new companies to get stuff out there. I am not over there this year. I am staying in sunny Blighty, uh, but I'm sure I will get all the information I need. So guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Comment below, let us know what you think. Like the video, share it around and we will see you down here next time.